I recently shared a video of me injecting around the eye with my needle pointed towards the eye and many of my colleagues were not happy with this direction. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you why you can inject pointing towards the eye in certain circumstances, but why you probably shouldn't in many others. So why shouldn't we point the needle towards the eye when injecting botulinum toxins? So I've been a trainer now for many years, and I also teach my new training students to inject pointing away from the eye. There's a very important reason for this. When you first start injecting, your control over the needle, the dexterity, but also your anatomical awareness in terms of the three dimensions of the face is relatively poor. So we layer on top different things that you can do that decrease the chance of one error being a critical error for the patient. So if I, for example, the one error of injecting too deeply, if you're pointing towards the eye has very different consequences to if you're pointing away from the eye. So this is why newer injectors in particular should inject away from the eye because it makes you less likely that one error will lead to an actual consequence. Now I have to say with injecting botulinum toxin, I am very, very aware of exactly where the needle tip is, especially with superficial injections. And I've also spent many years thinking about the anatomy around the eye and I feel very confident that I'm not putting, for example, botulinum toxin into the orbit or into a different layer. And if I do go too deeply, I would know not to inject. I would notice it. It doesn't happen to me anymore. I've done it enough times that I have good control over the needle tip. This, this happens with thousands of repetitions. So if you're a newer injector or you're using a blunter needle and you, you haven't quite got all the different variables down, it is quite easy to be trying to inject into a certain plane for the skin not to give way and then to suddenly to pop and the needle goes deeper in than you mean it to. This happens particularly when the needles are not sharp, something I don't tolerate when I'm injecting. This is one of the cases where you can create a tract and botulinum toxin could flow into an area that you did not mean to treat and it might increase your risk. Now, if you've got very good control and you can just put the needle in as deeply as you wanted to and you're very aware of the depth, the angle is correct, then the actual direction of pointing may matter less. It's just one of many factors. So overall, I do recommend that if you, within your first few hundred patients, that you're still injecting away from the eye because it does produce an extra barrier for safety. But the most important thing is to think about when you're injecting exactly what depth you're at, where's the position, and where is that bolus going to fill? Because when you put a 0.05 mil bolus of saline and botulinum toxin together, it will fill around the exit point of the needle. It's not like a hose. It doesn't spray in underneath the tissue. It falls, it literally fill, forms a bubble above the bevel in the needle. So if your needle tip is accurately placed, then you should be able to deliver a bolus safely, no matter what direction you point the needle. The problem comes from tracks caused by the needle or from choosing a poor entry point. So that's the way to go about understanding this. Get your, ent your entry point safe so that you know when your needle bevel is going to inject that it's in a place that is safe and don't rely on just one or the other. Like you, it's really all about developing that 3D high resolution understanding of the face, knowing where the safe areas are to inject and the unsafe areas. The direction of the needle is just one safer way to do this in the beginning. So does injecting towards the eye not leave the eye unprotected? The answer to this is no, because there are multiple other ways you are protecting the eye. And the most important of which is having control over your needle depth. If you're confident that you're only injecting two to three millimeters underneath the skin, then the direction of the needle doesn't really make much difference because of the way that toxin will flow out from the bevel of the needle as a bubble and doesn't go out like a hose. And you can tell that because every time you inject, you see the skin raise up in a bleb. We don't see it as a line in the direction that the needle is pointing. So you are protected by the position and the depth of your needle. So let me tell you a story about one of the reasons it is important when you first start to inject pointing away from the eye. Now, I've trained many thousands of clinicians and you stand over people around a bed and watch them inject. People have different, basically just dexterity or the ability to control spine movements. And I've noticed that some people, particularly when they start, they, they basically cannot control the depth very well at all. They'll put the full needle in, they're, they're unstable in their upper body and it's quite hard to get them to inject safely. So rapidly I learned with foundation courses that no one could inject pointing in a direction where if they went too deep, it would be near to the eye. So I would always train people to inject away from the eye because of this variation in the ability to control fine motor movements, particularly when you first start, 
But I also think there's probably some people who just don't have that much control or maybe it's a training issue. But I certainly did battle it with certain people with the fine motor control. What I would say is concentrate on that when you're injecting and make sure that you are stable everywhere you can be. So you start being stable with your feet, your pelvis, your, usually somewhere in your upper body, your shoulder. Everything is controlled. You rest your hand on the face. And so the only thing that needs to move is the, is the fingertips and maybe a little bit of the wrist. That gives you the ability to control depth much better. So a couple of injectors commented around the volume of Botox used in this particular injection. The question is being, isn't this quite a lot to use in this area? Now, if you actually count the number of units I use, it's actually half the licensed dose. The licensed dose is 24 units in the UK and in America. And this is a relatively light treatment for that reason. I think what's confusing people is the number of injections. Because if you typically inject one to three injections around the eyes, and all of a sudden you have all these injections higher up in the face, it looks like quite a lot of injections. They're all very small, one unit typically above the eye. Then I go to three units and then lower down, we're using two units. So it's relatively small doses, but spread out, which is one way to get a gentle result. So in summary, I do think it's worth thinking about the direction of your needle in many of the places where we're injecting. I feel safe when it's a superficial injection with botulinum toxin. I still think, for example, if you're doing dermal filler with a tear trough and you can't see the end of your instrument very well, it's much more important that you are pointing in a safe direction. Just because I feel comfortable doing it doesn't mean you should do it. I like that people have picked this up and felt discomfort about it because then it makes them think through what they're doing in their practice. And the most important thing is that when you're injecting, you feel that sense of certainty that you know where you are and you have safeguards in place. And although my, my technique will vary from many of you, the way you feel would trump anything that I teach you, I think, in terms of what feels safe. So if you have to inject in a particular angle to feel safe, please do that. But understand why, and that may give you some flexibility as you progress to sometimes inject pointing in different angles because you've put other safeguards in place. If you haven't already got my Botox Injection Patterns leaflet, it covers all the licensed doses for all the main products that you're likely to use. Um, you can get it by clicking on the link that goes with this video.